Hey guys, Grotto One here. So we're going to head back to the Firebird again today and we're going to talk about locating top dead center on an engine. So incorrect ignition timing, it can cause loss of power, loss of fuel economy, it can even cost an engine if the timing is too high and causes the fuel to detonate. I'm going to show you the front of my engine here. You can see my harmonic balancer right here. You can see all the numbers on it there. I like that. Most of them are not referenced like that. This one is made by Fluid Damper. I'm going to show you another one made by Chevy. You see this line right here? Well, this it's like a, an elastic divider between this outer shell and the inner portion. So what happens on these is the outer shell will sometimes shake its way into a different position than where it was set from the factory. And when that happens, then this uh, timing mark here is no longer accurate. So you're setting your timing and you think this is correct and it turns out it's not because let's say the line used to be over here because the outer shell kind of vibrated its way over so then it makes it incorrect. So how do you know when you're setting your timing what you have? Okay, so the front of my engine actually, this harmonic balancer is a one-piece design. So there's nothing there that is going to move on me and change the, uh, the reading where, where the ignition timing is at. But what it does have, you can see here, it's got an adjustable pointer. You can see the slots. I can lo loosen off those Allen heads and I can move this pointer. So for aftermarket parts, it's very common that uh, stuff like that is adjustable. So once again, there's another variable, you know, is the timing actually correct from what it's showing? So when I originally built this engine, I had all that stuff in mind and I verified where top dead center was as I was assembling the engine. I still had the heads off and really that's the best time to check it and verify that the pointer is pointing really where it's supposed to be at. You know, when the number one piston is truly at top dead center, then that pointer is pointing right at zero. So this one is already correct, I know that, but I'm just going to check it again and I'll show you how I do that with the heads on. Okay, so here's the deal. I need a piston stop tool for today's video. And years ago I made this one up, but it's too short for today's project. I must have made this for a small block Chevy for a different project. So I made up another one today with a bolt. I cut the head off and rounded it off here. And But the problem is I kind of welded myself up into the thread of the spark plug. And that head has aluminum threads. I really don't want to bugger that up. I don't have a die to clean this up. So anyways, with a combination of this tool and this tool, I've, I've got it working pretty good now. So about a year ago I made up a video called Big Block Chevy Power Secret and I cut up a head just to show some stuff. But today I dragged it out of the back because it's still got some good thread there in that spark plug hole. So I've been using that as a test subject here for my my fancy piston stop tool. The last thing I want to do is bugger up the thread in my aluminum AFR head on the Firebird. That'd be a pretty sad day. Hey, back to the workbench here just a bit. I ended up cutting my new one down quite a bit and it turns out pretty well exact same length as my original one. The only difference is it's a lot fatter on the end here. So this one was very close to being perfect. I probably used this in a big block that had um, you know, a bigger dome on the piston and it, that's why it will have worked. But anyways, now let's finally get to the nitty gritty here. Okay, so I've got the engine backed off quite a ways from top dead center. And I've got all the spark plugs out except for my fancy piston stop tool which I got in here, number one cylinder. And I know which is number one cylinder because it's the head that's farthest forward. See if you look at the gap there on the engine plate to the head there's a 
there's a space there and here there is no space so this one is farthest forward that's number one cylinder I don't think there's a V8 engine on the planet that has not got number one cylinder as the one that's farthest forward but anyways so the piston stop tool is in now you guys can get yourself situated on my tripod again okay so I should tell you guys the reason I took the spark plugs out was just so that the engine will turn easier and I have a better feel for finding that stop but I'm on the compression stroke here so as I turn it pressure builds up and then I wait a little bit I let it escape and I'll go a little bit more so I'm sneaking up on the stop now the piston is coming to the top and it's going to stop here soon and hit that stop okay it's right there all right okay so while you guys weren't looking I put a piece of tape on the damper and then I put a mark right where that pointer is at so that's the spot where the piston hit the stop that I made right there so what I want to do now is rotate the engine all the way around the other way and let that piston come to the stop again okay so I'm almost all the way around again I'm coming up to it now right there okay so while you guys weren't looking again a couple more things happened here I rechecked that these marks are accurate that the piston really came to a stop here at these marks so anyways two marks right in the middle is going to be top dead center so I've taken a piece of paper and I transferred the marks from the tape to this piece of paper then what I do is I fold it in half and line up the marks and then I can transfer it back here and where I folded it is true top dead center okay so I'm a little curious here actually got my pen here so I'm going to transfer the center mark from where I folded it onto the tape now okay alright there it is and I'm off look at that so pretty close but it's not perfect see that look at that so there's the zero mark I'm going to zoom in I'm going to show you guys and as a reference you can see shining through the tape how wide one degree is see the the faint lines there okay so I made another mark there at the edge of the tape so you can see I am off by about a quarter of a degree from zero and from there I can move my little pointer to adjust for that so quarter of a degree not really a big deal at all but where guys run into trouble is when they don't know what they have and they're off 10 you know 5 10 even more degrees or 20 degrees whatever you know the sky's the limit it could be anywhere and then they wonder well why am I having all these issues with uh, you know detonation or why doesn't this thing have any power when I set the timing correctly and all that kind of stuff so but uh, I learned a little bit here because I didn't know I was off a quarter of a degree so I think my first choice would still be to do this kind of thing with the heads off and I may make a video yet on that I've got a 454 short block in the back shed I may bring that in here yet too and we'll play around on that a bit but I think one factor here is see I've got the rocker arms still in play here like I didn't back them off so we've got the springs here doing their job and if you notice when I would release the engine off the piston stop it would spring back just a little bit you know and it would do it both ways so it would kind of even out but so there's a slight uh, variable there not very much but some interesting stuff here I thought I would give you guys a look and and uh, show you what's up I better take this piston stop out of here before I forget it's in there can you imagine cranking the engine over on a starter with that thing in there that engine would just take such a beating I think I'd be near tears <laughs> 